Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator and an acquaintance of my wife, he has a problem. And the problem is that he has a spur gear like this one that you see over here. And this spur gear, uh, well, it's of his lathe. And uh, every time he uses his lathe, uh, so now and then this spur gear breaks. And uh, of course it's because of it's a bad quality of spur gear, but also the problem is that it's <laughs> well, it's very expensive. If he buys it of the brand uh, that is the, the brand of the late, then he pays 54 euros for a replacement of this spur gear. And uh, when he showed it to my wife, my wife said, well, I think my friend can make something better for you. So she gave it to me and this is the moment I started creating a new spur gear because what can be difficult about this? So the first time she gave this spur gear to me I tried to find out all the dimensions of it. And uh, well of course this isn't really difficult because uh, if you know anything about gears then you know that they are most commonly made of a modulus uh, type of yeah, uh, system and this means that if you know the modulus type of the gear then you know a lot about it and in Fusion 360 there is a modulus generator so it's very easy to create well the drawing of this so I did so when I was in Fusion 360 the thing I had to do was going to tools and then under tools I had to go to the add-ins and in the add-ins there is this script and add-ins section uh, so when you click this you will find that there is a spur gear section right at the bottom here so I went to this spur gear section and uh, then you will find a lot of things where you can work with like for example this this is what helps you create this spur gear. Now, I knew it was a metric gear. I also think it was a 20 degrees gear, but more explanation about that later. Then the modulus number, well, I didn't know, but I knew it was a 30 teeth gear, so I could fill in 30 over here. The backlash in this case is 0.15. Don't press the enter button as I do normally. Then uh, the root fillers or root radius, well, it has to be something about 0 0.75, which is a quite normal uh, type of, of uh, root fillet. But I didn't know for sure, but this was something I had to fill in, so 0 0.75. Then I knew the gear thickness, it was 10.2 millimeters. And also I knew the inside uh, diameter and it had to be 10. Now because I knew the diameter of the whole gear, the whole complete gear, I knew that this modulus of 12.7, uh, this is not a very common modulus. More common is a modulus of 1, but this was impossible because of the size of the gear. So I had to find out if it was one of the other standards. And well, one of the standards is 1.5 or 2. So first I went for 1.5. And then I found out that the pitch diameter is 45 millimeters. Now this is something very important. Now why is this number so important? Well, you have to know something about the pitch diameter. And this is that the pitch diameter, if you follow this point here, uh, if you see this toot here, that you can see uh, over here, then uh, from here to where it starts bending, this is where the pitch is measured. And this goes also for the other side. So measuring between those two points here, will give you 45 millimeters. So over here, when you see this spur gear creator, you see this circle over here. This is the circle that talks about the root fillet radius. And this one, this is the size of the circle 
from the center to where it starts to bend in, this is the exact size that we have to measure. And in this gear, this is 45 millimeters. And because the modulus of 1.5 is a very standard modulus, it had to be this gear. So when I hit the enter button, this was the gear that I got from the generator. And well, this gear, this is something which really is uh, the, the base of the gear that I need. Then when I got this, I started to make the inserts on the, on the inside because, well, this was what my gear, my original gear has. And also I started to create some other things like uh, the bevel that came up, like here. And uh, I had the inside from the other side, so I had to create those as well. Then when I had this, I had to create the parts that make it stronger, like this. And I had to do that on both sides as well. Now when that was made, I had to go and make this top side over here. Because this is also in the original gear and I needed it on both sides as well. But then when I measured everything and I took a very close look, I found out that this part was laying a little bit deeper than this sides. And this was for this as well. So this part, this part, this over here, all these were laying a little bit deeper. And this goes for the other side as well. So I had to make yeah, a little bit of an insert for it because in the original part where it, uh, where it, uh, where it belongs, in the, the drill that it has to go into, um, there is a ring covering this complete plate. And this ring has to be mounted on top of this. So there has to be a little bit of room for it. And as you can see over here, there is a little insert over here, which you can see. So of course, for my part, I had to generate this as well. And that is exactly what I did. So I made a little insert into the, yeah, into the, the inside of this part so that a ring could cover it. And uh, well, I was sure that it could work. Now, having this spur created in Fusion 360 was only part of the solution because uh, this wasn't everything. The problem was that uh, my printers are not capable of printing POM and this is a very strong material and there is a reason that this spur gear is made out of that material. So I had to go online and find a, a 3D printing company that could print this for me. And then I had to find out if that price was, well, okay to replace the original parts. Well, I did. I did find a company that, uh, uh, that could make this part for me. And to be honest, uh, I could make 10 parts for uh, less than 90 euros. So this could be made out of POM for only, well, 9 euros a piece. And uh, then you have to order 10 of them, but hey, this is much cheaper than uh, 54 euros that he has to pay for it when he buys the originals. So this is my way of creating this part for him. And uh, well, this makes it a lot cheaper for him to buy this part and to work with his lathe. And of course, this part should be a little bit stronger and uh, it shouldn't break that often. And therefore, maybe he should make this out of another material. But on the other hand, of course I know that when a part like this breaks so often, there has to be a reason for it. But uh, not knowing that reason, well, he has to replace it very often. And then it's much cheaper to have his own 3D printed part, which only costs 9 euros and which is made by a professional 3D printing company, than to have this original part, which costs 45 euros. So, 
this is not a thing about uh, how you can get this replacement because this is a very specific part for a very specific machine. Uh, but this is how you could make a replacement like this. And that if your 3D printer is not as strong as, uh, well, as the part that you have to create, that there are professional surfaces that you can use uh, that can create a part as strong as this one. So therefore, well, try and figure out how you can recreate a part like this and uh, if you are able to make such a new part for yourself. And if so, well, <laughs> you, can, uh, yeah, you can save a lot of money on new parts. This is it, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something from this video. If so, please consider subscribing and uh, well, also hit that notification bell because then you will be notified every time I make a new video. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.